this team down by two to the corner. Caputo! No good! And it's over! St. Louis is going dancing! An unlikely run. Mitchell, Cassidy, Ellis. We've got to get a shot off. It's got to be a three. Ellis, Mitchell for the tie. Got it! Oh! Runner off the glass. No. Tip battle loose. Evans is absolutely decked by Gant. Evans stays in the game. Oh, speaking of oh, yeah. Conklin leveled yeah. Wilcox, and he's down for the count. Driving Evans for Conklin layup. Good whistle foul. Count the basket. You want to play rough? You want to play rough? Let's play. Assume they're not going to foul you. Just take it right to the rim. Good one. Two for the tie. Three for the win. Good one takes it in. And he got it. We're tied. Overtime. Here we come. Welcome to the House of Rick Built Podcast with your hosts, Colin Kessler and Zach Miller. This show is sponsored by Mortgage Partners Group, where mortgage solutions are made simple. Time out on the floor, 68-46 St. Louis. This is Billiken Basketball. Welcome back to the House of Rick Built Podcast brought to you by Mortgage Partners Group, where mortgage solutions are made simple. Give Jason a call at 314-422-0649. Back with episode number 81. I'm your host, as always, Colin Kessler, joined as usual by Zach Miller. Zach, how you doing? Uh, doing all right. I, uh, you know, just just working, you know, trying to follow the Billikens. It's hard, man, when there's not much going on. Yeah, not a whole lot of uh, new news coming out about the Billikens. Most of it's just been recruiting information, and that's uh, few and far between at the moment as well. So it's kind of been uh, – boy, it's been a really slow year, to say the least. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, it's funny, right, as they uh, decided they were going to start basketball season, and we'll get into it more, right, as they decided they were going to start basketball season November 25th, uh, I decided to go nomad, and I am uh, – gonna move to the uh the florida coast for a month really yeah just uh hang out down there and work from home and enjoy warmer weather and so it's kind of funny maybe maybe we'll get to a point where they allow people in orlando and i'll make the drive over but we'll, we'll have to see yeah you're gonna be living out of an rv down there or what uh a van down by the river yeah i figured that chris farley yeah well that's exciting stuff that's probably the most exciting thing that's happened on the pod and uh the last few weeks. I mean, again, you know, we've talked about it before with this podcast right now, but one of the biggest things is there's just not a lot to talk about. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying, we're trying to desperately to keep it going. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we'll keep it going. And as there is information oh, to talk yeah. about, we'll talk about it. And it's not, you know, that, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's no new information. Um, there is a little bit that we haven't really discussed. So obviously that's why we're back here. Uh, getting ready to discuss it, but yeah, I mean, just kind of sitting on our hands at this point in time and hoping for uh, hoping for the best. I don't know what else uh, what else can be said about it at this point in time. Yeah, I think I think I try to avoid uh, emotional swings when it comes to the Billikens. So it really, I mean, unless it's the season and we're talking like games and and whatnot, but like I try to avoid you know, what's going on specifically with the NCAA because that everything leads into like current events. And it's just, it's one of those things you just, I just try not to overwhelm myself with, with current events. So I kind of, kind of stay clear of, of breaking news and I'll, I peruse from time to time, but again, you know, had to, had to do so to, uh, to prep for this episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a, uh... Current events is something that I think we're all tired of talking about, so that's a that's a very fair thing. Um, well, you know what? Let's uh, let's go ahead and get through some of the topics that we have on the board here. Um, 
starting with the easiest one to talk about right now. Um, obviously, for those of you that have been paying any kind of attention, uh, the start date was set for Billikens basketball, for basketball really as a whole. Um, basketball will be back as it sounds, as it stands. Um, the season starts on November 25th for everyone, if I understand it correctly. Um, this is going to change. I mean, it's going to change a million times between now and the beginning of the season. Um, I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this, this start date? Are you surprised? Are you, um, did you expect it? I, I, I've been in the camp obviously all year saying there's no way, there's no how this, this is not going to happen. Um, and here I am looking silly. So I don't know. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on this? I, I think we both kind of looked silly. I mean, we both kind of, I mean, I was more optimistic than you, but um, I don't think it's going to change. I think you. I think th- it's a really smart move to set a date, and that way, these uh, whoever whoever are, are leading the charge in these bubbles uh, can now have a physical uh, target that they can look at and say, "This is this is what what well, this is where we need to." have this set by so we need now we need to have everything set by say november 1st or november 13th or whatever so i think it's important to set this date i think it will stick um and i think we will see basketball in several bubbles and it looks like obviously and we'll get into that more i think as we go on but um yeah i think I think I think it's good I, I'm impressed I, I'm I'm sure uh college basketball has has definitely benefited from watching the NBA, the basketball tournament, uh, uh, the WNBA, and of course the NHL, uh, all of those being either basketball or indoor sports, um, has benefited from seeing them do their thing. And I think they can kind of model, you know, five, six, seven different uh, bubbles around that, uh, that structure. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we're seeing it across the leagues. Um, bubbles work. They've been working, and they continue to work. I think the biggest thing that's going to affect any NCAA decision at this point is going to be the successfulness of college football. Um, right now, we're seeing college football, I, w- I want to say successfully working, but it's only been, what, this will be week three? I mean, um, we've had Notre Dame, Notre Dame just postponed a game. Yep. Um, but shout out to the original uh, bubble sport, uh, slam ball. Oh, there you go. There you, you go. Know? Keep pre, uh, keep bringing that sport back up. Zach is going to single handedly bring uh, slam ball back into the uh, public sphere of uh, inter- or, uh, interest here. Um, no, I mean, I think that in, in the college sports world, if, if college football can't successfully do it, a sport that is outdoors, um, a sport where there are no fans involved, although that might change very quickly here. Because, there have been fans. Yeah, well, that is Notre true, Dame. actually. You're Again, right. we come back to Notre Dame because they are front and center on, on NBC every Saturday. But, I mean, they had fans. I think I think the issue with football, college football especially, is that it's, you know, there's a difference between doing it as a job and doing it you know, as doing it as a job as an adult who's 21, 22, 20, 21 to 40, you know, we'll say 40. I don't know who's 40 in the NFL, but there's a difference between that and a, a kid who's 18 to, or a young man who's 18 to 20 trying to, you know, kind of stay away from the trappings that come with being a young college student. Yeah, I think there will be a lot of interesting impacts to this season. And, and you know, uh, again, I, I forgot about the fact that there are fans that some of these football games and even some of these schools are already talking about putting more and more fans in. Uh, I think even some NFL teams might have floated the idea. I yep. can't remember. I stopped paying uh, attention a long time ago. KC had fans. Um, I want to say Florida did. Nobody in Florida did, which is surprising. Texas had fans, one of the Texas teams. Um, yeah, I know because I looked into – drive in tampa's playing kansas city uh in november so i looked into sliding over to tampa sure for that game but yeah i mean uh, it'll be uh it'll be interesting to watch it'll be interesting to see if anything actually um is affected or comes out of these um these changes to how football games are being consumed i also wonder you know i was thinking about this the other day 
when you look at the the past history of Billiken's broadcasting, this is something that has been a sticking point, um, at least for me specifically, in terms of the fact that we half the time might not get our games on television, um, and we never know where it's going to be broadcast on radio. I would be curious to see if there's not a bigger push, a stronger push to find a very certain home for Billikens basketball this year, because there's no other way that fans can consume games. You know, this is, it's yeah. not an added incentive to bring fans down to the stands because they can't yeah. come. Yeah, I am. I think I'm, <clears throat> I'm stuck between these bubbles broadcast. I think what's going to happen is the bubbles are going to broadcast the games uh, at least the live. It's going to be just. I think it's going to be broadcast just like you see in hockey broadcast early in the playoffs, where uh, the local market, uh, you know, Fox Sports takes this international feed, and they have their announcers on it. I mean, it's going to be. I think a little bit easier for basketball um, than hockey because hockey, you know, it is such a fast paced sport. Um, I mean, the NBA broadcasts have been pretty decent. Uh, I think you can have. Uh, you know, Fox Sports pick up a few games. I think I think ESPN Plus is going to be a is is going to be a major uh, beneficiary of these uh, bubble games in college basketball because I mean I mean all these conferences have deals with ESPN Plus, and yeah. now uh, now it's the only way you can watch your team um, in some markets. Yeah, I mean it'll be. Uh... Boy, this is going to be a really interesting one uh, to watch. This is going to be a really interesting one uh, to see how it plays out because there's still so many unknowns. And as we've as we've kind of watched what's happened with a lot of sports, the the narrative and and kind of the game plan has changed so quickly, and it's changed so many times between you know uh, when we started going through this back in mid March to where we are now. Um, you know. I think we would all say that we would never have guessed that we'd be in this exact situation. I think everyone had their different opinions on it. People said everything would be completely back to normal. People were saying that it's the end of the world and we're not going to have sports in you know 2020 and into 2021. Um, and with that, we cue the REM. There you go. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things we can talk about right off the bat, um, specific to that November 25th start of the season date as well. Uh, you talked about bubbles, and one of the things that's been – uh, reported on John Rothstein, uh, who who has somehow continued to make a living out of tweeting about college basketball nonstop throughout all of this. Um, Remember, it's only temporary. Yeah, there you go. Uh, John has talked about there is a rumor going around that he is hearing and he's being told that one of the Orlando tournaments is going to be um, a tournament in which the teams involved will be guaranteed five games. Now, the problem with that tweet was that he said, I believe it was one of the six Orlando tournaments has a guarantee of five games for the teams involved. I don't know what tournament that is. I don't know if that is the Orlando invitation all the Billikens are involved in, but if SLU could get their hands on being in a five-game confirmed non-conference Orlando invitational in which you have a team like Gonzaga, who I believe on that preseason thing that we tweeted out from the NCAA March Madness account, Gonzaga was ranked number one. That's, I mean, obviously, whether you think they're number one, whether you think they're top ten or whatever, that's a good team to have uh, a chance to play. And likely, if you're playing five games, you're probably playing everyone in that invitational. It's not you know a, a bracket-style format anymore. It's just about getting games in and doing so in an environment where it's safe for everyone. You could just be like, well, here's five you know easy games where everyone's in a bubble, everyone's going to be safe, just play, you know, play each other head-to-head which would then also mean that we would get a game against Michigan State. Um, I think Belmont maybe is in that. So there's some good games to be had in that, and getting a confirmation or an ability to play all those teams would be huge, especially seeing as we've also found out that uh, the San Diego State game, without explicitly it being said, is, is all but been canceled because uh, the the conference uh, head-to-head matchup, it's the A-10, what is it? The uh, yeah, Midwest, Midwest. Uh, Mountain West, Mountain West. Okay, so there you go. So that, that matchup or that challenge has been canceled for this year. Uh, so there will be likely, I think we can all safely assume, no San Diego State game. So you start to watch this this non-conference schedule that looked really, really good this year and looked really, really promising, start to kind of fall to pieces. Uh, still some questions about are we playing Memphis this year? Are we moving that back to next year? The Minnesota game, is that happening this year? Is that getting pushed back to next year? Because those are two teams that are Midwest teams. So... It's not a ton of travel, and those would be nice games to get played. Uh, the Boston College game, I believe, has been confirmed that we're going to play that as well, uh, which is weird, again, to me, because that's a, a team in the East 
you know, on the East Coast versus, you know, teams that are in the Midwest. So if we're playing Boston College, I feel like you almost have to assume that. It's just, it's crazy. I mean, I just, uh, the logistical nightmare, like, I cannot wait to get Mike Wilson on here and talk about this logistics. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, the, there is, uh, there's a lot. I mean, there is a lot. Now, um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, without trying to say too much, because again, I, me and Zach were talking about this before we got on the podcast. It's almost like what we're doing right now is continuing to regurgitate the same thing. We're talking about the same information, the same bits of news, the same maybes and what ifs and potentialies and possibilities and maybes. Um, so I'm trying not to continue doing that. Obviously, we could talk the schedule to death. Obviously, we can talk um, the coronavirus to death. We could do all that. One of the things that I think I wish we I wish we talk it to death. Yeah, I mean, could could we get rid of it? Could we? Pretend, I mean, could we theoretically talk the virus to death? Well, if you if you believe the rumors out today, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is going to just single handedly take it down himself. So I think we'll all be good after he uh, gets through with his bout with uh with this. Um, has anybody checked with Chuck Norris? No, not yet. I think that's uh, that's another t- that's another person. Why has that not check. been a running meme? You know, I think we've gotten to the point where the youth of America that that lives primarily on social media doesn't know who Chuck Norris is. I, I'm I'm actually pretty certain that's got to be half of what it is. Which well, he was, yeah. I mean, it's well, not uh, yeah. not um not an unreasonable thing for them not to know who it is. But um, yeah, I mean, it's you you're looking at a schedule where you're going to begin conference play late in December that could possibly be pushed up. So you'll be lucky if you maybe, maybe, I mean, if you get the five games in Orlando, I think you're lucky to see 10 games um, throughout the month of December in non-conference um, with a possible 15. That's a to, hell of a lot of games in December. I mean, it is, in but a month. that's every once every three days. Am but I, if you're thinking I'm about it though, if you're playing a five game slate where you're playing, in a bubble environment in Orlando with a week or two of preparation down there so that you can quarantine and do all the necessary steps, then what you're really doing is probably playing a game every other day for 10 days, you know? So then I'm trying to do math in my head and that never ends well, but and, let's... and slew is, I mean, if you're talking games that quick, like slew is in a great position. Yes. Oh yes. I was talking about this with someone else the other day. The, the thing about in a bubble format, I think it, it, it completely, benefits a team like St. Louis University. I was talking to a SLU fan, a former uh, graduate, who was talking about, man, you know, if uh, if it wasn't for this coronavirus, this would be, you know, one of the most exciting years for Billikens basketball. And, you know, you'd have fans coming out like crazy and this and that and the third. And, oh, man, it's so sad to see this season kind of not get wasted, but we just don't get to fully experience it. And I was like, well, you know, the, the funny thing about it is, though, this actually plays more ways to our advantage. Right now, we've probably got one of the upper-class laden teams in the country. I don't think that's – I mean, an overstatement. I think you've got uh, one of the strongest upper-class core because you're a program that continually is focused on maybe four-year guys versus one-and-done teams. So you don't have to do a lot of work to come in and create chemistry. Uh, You don't have to do a lot to come in and kind of set up some camaraderie and show guys what you're looking to do and how you're looking to play together. They already know what it was like last year. They already know what they're looking to do this year. And it's going to be easier for them to face some of these adversities and these challenges that come up in, a, in you know, the very specific situation of this pandemic. It's it's definitely, you know, you, you've got a, an atmosphere that's completely, um, that's new to a lot of, it's new to everyone in college basketball. So you've got a bunch of guys that are, that are old, that are wise, that aren't going to BS around in the bubble, you know? Yeah. Uh, they, they can, they can handle this sort of, uh, change, you know, and you've got, you've got your young guys have spent a year in college basketball. Um, you know, you've got, it, it's just, it, it's, it's this, this roster is ripe for a bubble format and a format that is unfamiliar to a lot of teams Yeah, because they're going to be, you know, they're going to, they're, they're businesslike, man. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's going to be, a season that benefits the Billikens as much as it benefits any team. Um, Should in we bring back the old, the old Rams? Got to go to work. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think you're going to see. Look, I, I'm excited regardless of what happens because yeah. I think that this team, you know, 
let's let's take Orlando. Let's I mean again, this is all hypotheticals and this so I'm saying everything is hypothetical at this point, but let's assume that you know the Orlando Invitational that Slew is playing in is the t- the tournament or the Invitational that's playing five confirmed games for every team. Think about that. There is no time to game plan in between those games. You're basically going through a quick run through or walk through the next day to get plans into place. And you're taking time off because you can't run through heavy practices. You can't face up and get prepared for four or five days to face the team. There is. It wouldn't be hard to fathom that if you got Gonzaga on the, their third or fourth game, that you couldn't just manhandle them. And I don't mean that like you're that much better. I mean that is you're you're in great shape, you're strong, and you're going to shove it right down their throats. And that's just. I mean that's the style of basketball that Slew plays. You yeah, don't I need mean, a game plan. No, we're moving. I mean, as much as we're moving away from bully ball, um, I mean, that's a style you're going to have to be familiar with um, in that third and fourth game, fifth game, um, when you don't have time to game plan. And and when you have 10 guys, when, when your second team can go out and compete with your own conference for a title, I mean, you are in prime shape to – to not have a scouting report that a team can adjust in that short of time. Right. No, I think, you, I mean, this is, again, I, I it's hard. It, do, it, it's such a diverse team too. You've got Jordan Goodwin and Hassan French bully ball. You've got, you've got Yuri Collins and uh, Terrence Hargrove who are by all accounts, high flyers and, and, uh, and runners that'll get out and run. You've got, uh, Martin Linson, uh, who, uh, and uh, Andre Lorenzen, who are you know maybe a little more finesse. I don't. I think Martin Linson's a little. It's kind of a is a is a banger too. Um, you've got Jimerson who can shoot the ball. Um, you know, again, Fred Thatch is a flyer. Um, so you've got different ways that you can you can either shoot over a team. You can you can bang them to death. You can you can run them out of the gym. Either way. Yeah, I think what you know the the things that are standing out to me right now, man, I don't see any reason that this isn't a top a top ten or a top fifteen team. Assuming we have a good showing, and assuming yeah. we are able to put together a nice little non conference schedule. I mean, you know, the comparisons keep getting made apparently to SLU being this year's Dayton or San Diego State. I would argue that they're much better. Now, Obi Toppin. I think singular- we're much more well rounded. Right. Obi Toppin singularly was better than probably any of our best players. I, I don't know if that's uh, I don't know how you even compare it because Obi Toppin Obi Toppin, excuse me, was just a freak long player. He was super athletic and he could shoot the three overrated Toppin. Well, you can say what you want to, but still a very talented player. But then look at our yeah. roster. I mean, it's insane. You've got two, you got three seniors. Two of them yeah. are Jordan Goodwin and Hassan French. Jordan. All three of them are first team conference, first team all conference players. Yeah, and Jordan all three is of them. Jordan is likely going to be a top contender for all American because he's a walking double double. Hassan. And if yeah, Hassan if, got bullied if, last year because they just tripled down on him for a good like, chunk of the season, yeah. and he couldn't. Well, create. that's because. You didn't have Jimerson. Yeah, you and didn't you have Jimerson. Jimerson. Jimerson can could make could score. He could get twenty points any game. Just uh, you know, he. Yeah. Could, I mean, he's not only a shooter. We saw him. He's like Mike Crawford on steroids. Well, you you've got you've got a couple of things. You've got Gibson Jimerson. Obviously, we talked about it. I, I think I was tweeting at West Pine earlier today. You know, when you saw Gibson Jimerson out on the floor last year, what you saw was a guy that just by his mere presence on the court forced teams to spread out, forced teams to take him seriously, and thereby created space on the inside. Now if you've got him out there with a guy like, let's say, Javante Perkins, who's supposedly put on like 20 pounds of muscle, a guy who can get to the basket when he wants to, but can also pull up from the mid-range, can also knock down a three when he wants to, can shoot consistently from the free-throw line, so you can't just foul him and put him on the free-throow line, has you know as has been the kind of running game plan against this Billikens team, you have a guy that's dangerous from multiple places on the court. Then, not to mention the fact that hopefully you get a guy back in Fred Thatch who can, A, be one of your best, if not your best defensive player on the court, but, oh, by the way, can also hit a three, can also you know score a little bit in the mid-range, but can, you know, offensive rebound, 
I wouldn't say as well as Jordan Goodwin, but he's on the same caliber and he can get up there and he can he can fly with the best of them. You've got a guy in Uri Collins who last year as a freshman looked as good with the ball as I think any you know freshman point guard we've ever seen at St. Louis University, barring let's say Larry Hughes, maybe a couple of other names. I don't want to go down that road, but the point is he looked incredibly good with the ball for a freshman. Odds are it's going to increase this year. The one thing that's been pointed out about him is that he's going to have to get better with his. Um, Turnover to assist ratio. He's, you know, the the risks he was taking last year. He's going to have to pay off a little bit more on some of those risks, and he's going to have to find a way to um, judge, engage the situations a little bit better. But even that, I'm not too worried about. I would be surprised if you see some of these freshmen come in and get too much playing time because they've got such a strong core of guys. You've got Jimmy Bell Jr. who lost what was it like another 18 to 20 pounds. That dude was showing us last year that he can be a very effective tool. You can match up against anyone you want to. You can go all small. You can put Hargrove in at the five and Javante in at the four or you know however combination that you want to. And you can go small and quick and go with any you know small team in the country. Or you can go big and you go with Jimmy Bell and, and Hassan. Or you can go normal and have Hassan at your five with Jimmy you could off have, the bench. No, you could have Jimmy Bell, Hassan French, Martin Linson... Andre Lorenzen, I mean, yeah, and like a in like a Jordan Goodwin or a Fred Thatch running the point. I, I think even uh, Perkins could run the point. Uh, yeah, He's that good. Yeah, it's. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of combinations with this team right now. I think Perkins is going to be the star of this team. Yeah, I said it last year, and I'll say it again. I think he is the best player on this team all around. I, in terms uh, of he, the importance to a team, I don't know about that, but I s- certainly feel like he is the best player all around this team. I would, I'll, I'll, he's fantastic. Uh, just he does everything he does has show, looks like he's not even trying. No, again, I go back to that dunk against Seton Hall last year. He goes coast yes. to coast and just throws down a monster. I've, I, 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 I still. I, did he bend his knees to jump? I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, if you asked me in the moment, I would have just told you he was floating on air. So I probably don't. It, have he a really looked good like act- uh, he looked like Matthew McConaughey and Angels in the outfield. Well, that's yeah, that's a comparison you could make. Um, I, I yeah, I mean, it's boy, and this is the thing. You know, you you could sit here and talk about this to death all day long, but the problem is, you know, you're not. You're not seeing anything right now. I mean, you're you're watching these guys at practice, and you're going, okay, well, you know, this is exactly what we knew. You know, you, you're waiting to see what these confirmations are on season games and and non conference games and and conference games. It's um, a little scary. Yeah, it is a little bit. Um, and, and the, the the scarier part of it is now there was a certain comfort, I think, at least for myself, that you know, should this season not happen, there was going to be that likely kickback of okay, well, then everyone's getting a red shirt. We're kicking them back a year, and you'll see. Goodwin, Hassan, Javante come back with you know the rest of this team, plus likely the incoming recruits. We'll talk about who some of those might be in a second. But can you hold on? Just thinking about that gives me goosebumps. If you add, if you add that, yeah, I mean, if you did, it would be nice. And 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 you know, but even that, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'd rather is- play. I'd rather play. I, I want to see what I want to see. This team go up against the best and beat them. Well, and I think that this is the year where you have the best chance. I mean, like I said, you're talking about a season where a lot of weird things are going to happen, where a lot of weird things are going to be going on, and this team is best suited to just go up against anyone on any given night because they don't have to game plan as much as other teams will. When other teams can see what the strategy is going to be, they can prepare for it. Is this Travis Ford's moment to shut up the haters? I don't think so. I mean, I think what you saw at Oklahoma State is there was, what, two, three good years, and then there was that drop-off again. I think for Travis Ford to to solidify himself, it's either going to take one of two things. He's going to have to have three or four years of consistently making the tournament, drawing in kids out of St. Louis, as he has done, but continue to do it and continue to do it at a really high level. I think a lot of people forget about Cartier Gordon because, let's be honest, we saw how that situation went, so people don't really take it seriously, you know. If you had Travis Ford, let's say, what, three or four years before, and, you know, not to rehash this argument, but he pulls in Jason Tatum, we're having a different conversation because people go, oh, he made a statement right off the bat. That being said, you have him now, but I think that the the running track record has been he's a great recruiter, but can he coach? I think last year we started to, especially at the end of the season, see Travis Ford can coach. You know, there was questions. I think me and you both asked it. There's questions about his offense. There's questions about can he script and can he run an offense that's not only effective, but is cohesive and has some kind of goal in mind. Last year at times it seemed like, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. 
I think part of that is a credit to Yuri Collins, and I think part of that just goes back to the fact that Travis Ford is a stellar recruiter. When you can put a point guard in there and say, hey, this is what our goals are on offense, and this is kind of the offense we want to run, but here's the ball, kid. Go do what you're going to do. I think that's a, that's a situation in which Travis Ford benefits the most because he doesn't have to coach. You know, he doesn't have to come up with these you know, well-drawn plans. You know, these Rick Majerus playbooks where all of a sudden he's got 500,000 plays that he can just run through at any given time, and these guys know what like a well-oiled machine. He can go out there and let these guys play and, and, and manage them on the things that you know he feels like they need to change or adjust. Um, so I don't know. I think for me, it's going to be longevity. Yeah, it's. I, I think, I think he has a chance to show up and you know, kind of at least put the haters on hold for sure. But um, well, I, I think, think he has he a takes, chance to put us on a national map for next year. Yes, yes. I think he has a chance to um, because you're already starting to see it. I mean, we're starting to see people take recognition of Slew before this year when. Uh, there's been so much going on. You would almost assume that Slew just kind of gets swept under the rug for one reason or another, especially because we didn't get an into last year. So no one really knew um, how good that team could be. You know, the frustrating part about that is you could see a situation in which Slew was coming off two back-to-back appearances in the NCAA tournament, and all of a sudden the track record's looking really, really good for Travis Ford going into what will likely be another year of making the NCAA tournament. Knock on wood over here, but I think that we have a really good shot at that. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, I think this is, I think if you have a good season, I think if you make the NCAA tournament, and frankly, I think if you make it past the round of 32, that's been the sticking point since we started getting back to the tournament, you know, since the Majerus era years, we would win that first game and then we would get just stonewalled in the second game. If we can make it past the round of 32, um, and, and that's, that's also assuming some things there. I mean, that's assuming that we see uh, a March Madness style tournament, although, you know, the NCAA has come out and said they have plans. Uh, they intend to do it. They intend to make it special for fans. So it's likely we're going to see it. Um, so it'll be interesting. I mean, certainly if March Madness comes back this year, it's likely going to be probably the most watched sporting event of the year, I have to imagine. You didn't get it last year. Uh, you got a regular I mean, Super Bowl. So I, you know. I mean, I'm, like, I'm, I will save up my money to just gamble it all away on every damn game. I will save it all up to put it all on every single slew game. That's oh yeah, 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 yeah. I will put I will put the house, the car, everything on every single slew game. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think I think last that time I did that, we really sucked. Well, you know, it happened. It was it was uh, I lost like two hundred bucks. <sighs> Jim Cruz, man. Well, yeah, we don't need to rehash that one. Uh, that um, lost to Ball State. Well, just... I, I don't know what to tell you on that one. Um, I still still hurts. Still well, hurts. there's a lot of things about the Jim Cruz years that still hurt for a lot of us, uh, and we just keep putting ourselves through that pain too as we bring back former players and stuff of this nature. Um, you know, I, I look at this season though, and I think that there's a lot uh, there's a lot to be had. I think that there's a lot of good things that can come out of this season, and I think that this is a season where Billikens fans almost need it to happen, not because we're so. Um, we're so dry on Billiken's content, not because we're so, you know, just craving something new. Uh, I think really just because we need to see this team succeed at the highest levels and because it can and because we've never been so well, you know, fit and suited to watch this team go out there and, and put up some ridiculous performances against some top tier level teams. Um, and again, I think part of that just is it, it, it comes down to the fact that this team, um, they their style of play it just fits best with being able to go out and, and in a tournament setting or in a condensed setting. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And here's the other thing about it too. If you think about you, know, we've played the the what ifs games and the how do you do it games with ourselves. Oh, have we? Like, well, I think we have. I think we've done it on the podcast a few times where you just ask yourself how do you how do you bubble a, a, an NCAA season how do you make a bubble for a season how do you remove these kids off campus so if you look at march madness i think that the ncaa would be more prone to say okay you're going to get two or three weeks off a of class maximum and we're going to play you know sunday to saturday every week we're going to be in one location and we're going to run <sighs> through these games you know i better I- still i i better still be working from home if i'm not like that was that's what I was frustrated I think with the NHL when we're talking about the bubble system playing every day like they played a game seven at three o'clock on a Friday no in I Dallas hear you. time 
I hear you. Like, I don't want to see a semifinal or not a semi. I mean, obviously, once you get down to that. Right. Like, no, you're you- going to be working night games at that point. Yeah. No, and, but, and that's uh, the thing. If you started on, you know, the Friday, Saturday that they normally do, and you do your round of 64 games and you do them all yes. day, I, or, there's yeah, no just, reason yeah. that you couldn't do the NCAA tournament in a week or two. Obviously, it's not as fun. No, I don't, I don't think you – I I think I don't think they'll get off class. I think they'll have to go virtual. I mean, they already get off class anyway, right? So you'll just quarantine. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's entirely true. I think a lot of these no, schools are well, going in person. No, when you travel – no, well, right, but travel. I'm saying, but, okay, but then the other point of that is you're not traveling from location to location, so you're all sitting in the same place. Sure. So why would you just force these kids to stay on campus or you know stay in the same place for four weeks when you can do it in two? You know, it, I get that it, it's one of those things that's not perfect and it's kind of sucky, but at the same time, when you think about what makes sense and how do we do this in the best way that's safe for the kids but also fun for fans, I think you could run through it reasonably quickly while still giving them March Madness. I- uh, yeah, I mean, you're and you're assuming that these teams go back home after they win their two games before they go to this, the round of the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Well, I mean, I'm assuming that they're they're staying in the same place for all these games. Oh, That's they will. Yes. Well, I, I don't mean, see I how would you would move that, anywhere uh, because if you move, then you have to re-quarantine all these guys for another. You what, would just seven have. Days? To, I mean, you'd essentially probably do it at Disney World. Say, I'm. I'm assu- What I'm assuming is that the NBA setup will be left for the NCAA. Yes, correct. I would assume as as much as well. So, I think there's a lot of questions that are going to be are going to be answered here in the next coming weeks and months because obviously, according to the NCAA, they've got some plan on and you know in the works in place. They were talking about that well over a month ago, saying that they had something that uh, they've been working on, and obviously, the NCAA missed out on one of their biggest days of the year. Um, how they make that profitable for themselves, I have absolutely no idea. Apart from ad and sponsorship stuff, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. But this is this is a season where the Billikens could capitalize, and 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 should they make a deep run in the NCAA tournament again, if it happens, um, this is where you start to see St. Louis University basketball be back on the map. And and the beauty of that is, then the following year you're gonna have a coro. With Jimmy Bell Jr., Yuri Collins, Gibson Jimerson, Fred Thatch, um, Terrence Hargrove Jr., you're going to have a team that's that's still very, very good, very, very scary, very, very dangerous. This is going to be a scary, scary team to play next year as well. And when you can come in back-to-back years like that and make some serious noise, that's when you start seeing teams come in and assuming Travis Ford is still here. And I, I only say that because I don't want to be presumptuous, so knock on wood. Assuming Travis Ford's still here, then there's no reason that you wouldn't be able to believe that Travis starts picking up some higher level recruits. Um, speaking of that, Zach, you got some news coming up. I don't think that anyone was surprised by the top three for for this young man. Jordan Nesbitt put out his top three. Um, well, well, putting putting a, a low rent school like Memphis in your top three. Wow, is just is surprising. I I was not terribly surprised by it, um, but. That's only because that's the same kind of talk that's been going around message boards, websites, blog sites, and all of the above for a while. So it was just kind of like you knew, for whatever the reason was, I, I I couldn't personally put a finger on that, but we knew that that was kind of where it said it was at and who he was looking at. Um, Jordan Nesbitt puts out his top three. Um, St. Louis University, Illinois, Memphis. I think Slew's going to – we've got as good a shot as anyone, for for sure. No question it just, about it. It's, it. It seems like these the players – believe they have them you know it, it could be partly that um i don't know i mean when you watch so many of these st louis kids that have been there uh and continue to stay in st louis and then they're about you know they're going after these st louis kids as well it just shows how well travis ford has done of creating a base of st louis players that are willing to stay in st louis and play for st louis university um and, and once again the the fruits of that labor are showing themselves in the recruiting process of jordan Nesbitt. so it'll be interesting to see um, kind of how that plays itself out because I, I think again, you that this team has as good a chance as anyone to to bring in Nesbit. Illinois is a team that right now looks like they are poised to be a top fifteen team, uh, but a lot of that comes from the fact that you have a guy in Bam out of bio who's coming back this year. They thought he was going to be a one and done. He's probably going to be a two and done maximum. I don't see him staying past this year. And the fear was if Bam left after last year that that was not going to be a team that could can really compete on a high level like they did last year. So it's not a team that has that long-term staying power at the top. If Jordan Nesbitt can come in and not only get playing time, uh, but can get playing time on a really good team, on a hometown team, 
uh, and can do so for a couple of years while continuing to do what the guys ahead of him did, which is build on the recruiting class and build on the talent pool uh, from both local guys and national guys. I don't see a better option for him personally. Yeah, and I think I think we forget really easily about Fred Thatch, Demarius Jacobs, and of course Francis Okoro. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, you're right. No, I, again, I, this, you could sit here and literally talk all day long. You could sit here and talk all day long about every single one of these guys. Now, Fred Thatch, I, ch- I tend to personally leave out a little bit. You know, we talked to Ford uh, Stewart about it. Uh, obviously, you like to think he's going to be healthy. You like to be think he's going to be 100%. But until you start to see that in action, I just don't want to jinx it. So maybe that's just me being very you know cautious about talking about him. But you're right. We saw Demarius Jacobs can shoot very well from the three last year all be it inconsistently, uh, if that gets more consistent, then boy, you're talking about him, Javante, Gibson, um, and and Fred Thatch maybe a little bit, all shooting, or I said Fred already, but you're talking about those guys shooting the three ball semi-consistently and showing a little bit of a dangerous threat to shoot from behind the three. I'd love to see Yuri Collins shoot a little bit from three, not that I want to see him look for it, but if he can hit one or two here or there over the course of a season and show that he can at least do it. I think that that would help kind of create some more space as well where guys feel like they got to pop out on him and then he can just blow right by him as they come on the closeout. But neither here nor there, you're going to have so much spacing for different guys being on the floor that, I mean, this is just, this is exciting. This is what we've been yeah. waiting so long to see finally, and here we are back once again. Dear Lord, six pound, eight ounce, baby Jesus. Laying please in a let manger. The season happen. Yeah, please let the season happen. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to. I think it's. Um, I don't know that there's any stop in this train. It's more just about what does this season look like and how does this season yep. go. Um, and I think that's you know that that like I said, it's the ultimate question. Uh, it's the question that's going to drive um, drive the next few weeks and months as we uh, get geared up. And I think there's going to be uh, you know maybe one or two things happening in this country that's going to kind of supersede the uh, conversation about college basketball, which is going to be very fun nope. for everyone to listen to. Nope. Um, college basketball only. Yeah, well, I would like to think that that's the case. Um, you know, I, I went and I touched on this. Uh, I went and touched on this slew preseason uh, rank number 36. I don't really put much stock into it again because – I was just shocked by the fact that they put SLU in the 36. Um, but certainly it's, it appears, again, St. Louis yeah. University is getting some real national recognition right now, and people are seeing that there is, there's something special happening here. So there's another thing you can touch on and say, look at you know, look what we got going on over here and the fact that um, we're not just crazy and talking and yelling at ourselves. There are other people around the country that know just how good this team is. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um as a as a Billiken fan, I I generally hate when we get like it's a love hate relationship with with national publicity for sure because yeah. you know you you want people to notice you and you want people to talk about you but then you get nervous that you know the team's now got to live up to this hype and when they don't. Not that it matters that you look like kind of a dummy, but well, yeah. I mean, I've said some very, some very strong things about St. Louis basketball in the past. I've been very strong and opinionated on some things about St. Louis University basketball before. I think the bigger concern, in my opinion, is that if you start seeing success on a national level, and all of a sudden people from around the country that forgot Travis Ford existed for, you know, the entirety of his time here at St. Louis University, all of a sudden go and look and say, "Oh, wait, Travis Ford built a, another program." At a, at a small quote unquote university like SLU. And all of a sudden people start talking about, we need to poach Travis Ford from St. Louis university. Does he stay or does he go? That's a question that a conversation is down the line, but that's certainly one of the things that when you immediately start talking about national media attention, that always comes to my mind is something that sits in the back of my mind is would Travis Ford ever leave one of those in, in that situation? That's a tough call. Oh yeah, I, I mean, and I, I don't. Certainly... Uh, I, I, we've had a positive podcast. Let's, let's. No, no, I'm not sitting here to speculate on that. I'm let's just saying that's steer when... clear. No, I, I, I am, I am steering just about as clear as I can. I mean, there's not, <laughs> not a whole lot more to talk about. Um, yeah, um, trying to get some more interviews and stuff done as well. Um, talk to Ford Stewart. Um, obviously you've talked to Michael Wilson as well. So hopefully we'll trying get those get guys. Him, yep, get those guys on. I had to take some time off. Um. And now we're kind of back going again. 
Uh, so hopefully we'll be doing that. I've been working on something else that may or may not come through. I just haven't really, there's nothing to talk about at this point in time. So, uh, if those things play out then then we'll let you guys know, I'm um, just working on the groundwork and behind the scenes stuff as we get ready for hopefully a uh, season for 2020, 2021 and, uh, see where we go. Obviously, uh, as usual, I'll probably get going on a preseason blog and get that over to Peter and get some stuff out with that as well. Um, you know, we talked to, to uh, Earl Austin at the beginning of this whole thing and said, let's do a preseason episode with you. So maybe we can finally get him and Bob on together for, for a preseason uh, show. I think that would be super fun. I think they'd probably both be interested in doing that. I'd, I'd like to think they'd both be interested in doing that. And that would be hell, we wouldn't even do anything. We would basically just be recording them talking and having a conversation about the Lickens basketball, and we would just exist. Yeah, that sounds good to me, man. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. I, I'm excited uh, that we're getting some Billiken action. I just, I, I want to see some concrete stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, again, Before I, think, I really start putting my emotions into it. Well, I think my emotions are, are, are I think everyone's are very afraid after They're this year. They're always in it. So. Yeah, no, it's just it's very afraid because we've seen so much crazy yep. stuff happen that you just never know uh, what can happen. Well, Zach, anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? No, just uh, remember if if you're in the market for a, for a home loan, uh, check out our good uh, our good partner over there uh, at Mortgage Partners Group, Jason. Uh, you got the phone number right there. I think I I I'd never have it. Yeah, I can pull it up. The phone number again is three one four four two two zero six four nine. Yeah, he'll uh, he'll set you straight um, with a home loan. Yeah. Also, don't forget, as always, the uh, House of Rick Built YouTube channel is up. I'm going to work on um, here in the meantime, since we don't have a lot to do, I'm going to look at uh, potentially putting some more clips and stuff up. The problem is we didn't start doing video until probably a good, I don't know, two months ago. So a lot of the stuff that we did the last year and a half for the first part of the show, I just don't have video stuff up for so you're basically going to be staring at a screen, which isn't as fun, but... Uh, you know, it's clips. So check out the House Direct Built YouTube channel. Make sure you hit a subscribe on that. Leave us a rating on anywhere you listen to podcasts. Help us get this out there a little bit more. We appreciate it uh, all the same. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Go check out Warriors Partners Group. Go check out the House Direct Built on YouTube, on Twitter, on social media. Check back next time for more content.